what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM and yes I know in the previous build I have said that the build is lagging or something like that but here it's not anymore lagging and this update actually makes a lot of things better and this is the April build this has the April 5 security patch and of course this is the 5th April 2022 build in the March build there was a couple of lags or stutters here and there while daily driving but they are totally fixed in this particular build and here I have also installed the ANX camera and stuff with Magisk if you don't know how to flash ANX camera on your Evolution X ROM and that is based on the Android 12 L of course you can check out the guide for that from the description or the cards again inside about section we still have the Evolution X logo up top and this shows as Android 12 but this is of course Android 12 L if you're looking at the animations and stuff everywhere you will see that this is like the Android 12 L over here totally and yes you shouldn't worry about the animations they are totally working fine now and the whole UI is very fast and snappy and we have the Evolution X version right here and if you keep tapping on it you get this kind of doodle and let me go back we have the security patch of latest April 5th 2022 that's just awesome and we have the stock kernel as the Soviet start then we have the build date and the build number and stuff mentioned the SMX status is still enforcing and let's assume if you are on the previous build of March and if you want to update to this particular build and even if you are rooted you can watch the guide from the description again even when you are decrypted and you even if you have flashed magisk earlier other than that let me actually show you the Enix camera is working perfectly fine almost but yes there are a couple of problems like the portrait mode and stuff they don't work but I'll also link another Enix camera you can try that and with that it may be working I'm not really sure but I have heard that it's working fine with that kind of Enix camera I'll link that below too and that's also a magisk module you can flash it and try it out yourself I'm not going to talk about the customizations every time in the videos because it may get boring because as you can see the customization panel is still similar it has the same things which were there earlier and let me tell you it has even more things which were there earlier like in the system panel let me actually show you in the gestures which still get the quick tap then the three finger screenshot gesture and stuff with edit delete and the capture more option is still present over here you shouldn't worry about those and we still have the one handed mode then we have the system navigation gestures and if you go into the settings we get the advanced gesture and stuff if you want all of these you can have those and the pill length you can also customize the haptic feedback overall inside the UI is very good even it appears whenever you are like scrolling on the recent panel too that's awesome so let me actually show you the split top feature and if I go into here and just click on another app and as you can see the split top mode is actually working great of Android 12 no issues whatsoever with the split top just like this you can switch between apps and that's just awesome and it stays in the recent panel too so let me show you right here we have two apps together and as you can see they both are staying there together so yeah this is great that we have the split top working great again in android 12 and everywhere again we get a much more smoother experience over here Talking about battery life, yes, that too has been improved. We get the battery settings like this. There is the percentage and the battery bar like this. And the battery usage you can see from right here. Or let me actually show you with the Aku battery app. And with that, I have got about five to five and a half hours of screen on time. That's decent when you consider this device is almost two and a half to three years old. And I'm using the original battery. I didn't replace the original battery. And here the battery life should be decent. Also the fast charging is working great. You shouldn't be worrying about that. And the standby time is really good over here, about 125 hours it shows, so that's just awesome. And in the battery health, I have about 76% battery health here it shows. So with 600 or 700 plus charging cycles, this is good enough I would say. Talking about the quick setting panel, yes, I still am kind of disappointed because the quick setting panel stays dark like this even when you are in the light theme. And we have the other toggles that you will need like the flashlight auto rate and the night light hotspot etc toggles. The always on display you can toggle from right here. The reboot toggle is also there. The resetting appears right over there and you can edit and add them from right here. And there are plethora of options like the coffee and stuff and we have the sound search, audio mode etc. So you can add any kind of toggle that you want. But I have added a couple of them already and the FPS info and stuff still appears as you are noticing right there. And let me show you the more toggles like the Google Home kind of toggles are there. Let me show you the screen recorder and stuff are still there. We have the device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time. They should be working great. Also we have the nearby shared, the airplane mode, the sound toggle and if you tap and hold on it. This is how the volume panel will look like. The heads up toggle, the battery saver, 
the do not disturb extra dim all those options are there and of course the power menu appears like this and if you tap on advanced you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here and again it still has amazing amount of customizations it passes the safety net test right out of the box but even with magisk i have the safety net passed so banking app should not be a problem over here also if you're worrying about the drm info let me show you the drm info stays as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p without any issues and all the animations all over the ui are pretty smooth if you're noticing all these animations are working great the widgets in the home screen are working fine we get the pixel launcher by default so that's pretty normal there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen but of course that's there for the status bar and yes if you're looking at the fingerbit scanner speed let me actually show you the fingerbit scanner is working perfectly fine almost and it works 100 percent of the time and this is how the always on display looks like you can double tap also that will wake the screen and whenever you tap the fingerbit scanner it unlocks it also has the fingerprint scanner animations and the icons changing option it shouldn't worry about that and let me show you i have opened a couple of apps and if i open them one by one just notice all the apps are staying in memory so you shouldn't be worrying about the like ram management over here and yes i have tried everything and all the apps stays in memory no issues whatsoever and in the recent panel too as you can see all the apps are in memory and as you can see you can switch between apps just like this and it works super fine no issues whatsoever all the app stays in memory if you are looking at the benchmarks it offers really good benchmarks over here so the performance overall for daily driving or even gaming it shouldn't be having any issues and this is a really good thing that whenever you are not using the device as you can see the fps actually drops quite a lot so that will actually help with the standby time of the battery and whenever you touch the screen as you can see the fps brings up close to like 50 60 fps so this is great that whenever you are leaving the device, the FPS will actually drop. So it will not drain your battery a lot. And in the battery settings, we still have the idle manager. I don't have it turned on, but yes, you can of course turn it on if you want to extend even more battery. And here we have the battery temperature on the bottom in the battery settings. In the sound and vibration, we have these kind of sound settings. Of course, we have the adaptive sound. Then we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option. You can also change the vibration and haptics if you want to. Then the dial pad tones, touch sound, vibration, etc. You can customize and we have the per app volume control too if you want to enable that. Now talking about the sound quality overall with the speakers, with the earpiece, with the headphones, everything is great and you can of course use these kind of audio presets or you can say I have been using it with the youth edition and the sound quality for the headphone jack was awesome. Even with Bluetooth, the sound quality should be good enough over here. Also we have the hi-fi audio option if you want to use that. We also have the bass reduction, treble reduction, etc. options. Even the bass booster option is there with the presets there is the clear speaker option if your speakers has some dust it sounds muffled you can of course use this clear speaker option that will actually help talking about the display settings we still have the dc dimming high brightness mode everything is working great extra dimming feature is there and inside lock screen and stuff we have some privacy kind of controls double line clock and stuff is there you can disable wake screen for notification is there then the double tap to wake is of course there and that's working i have showed you already the prevent accidental wake up is there that's the pocket detection that works fine too wake up on plug you can enable or the night light you can customize also the colors are set to boosted right now but you can actually set it to like the saturated adaptive or you can actually customize the rgb of the screen inside wallpapers and styles we have these kind of accents and you can change the accent color depending on the monet theme engine's accent and you can ch also choose the basic colors if you want to the dark theme is there and the dark theme is actually pitch black you can of course change it with the monet theme engine in the customization panel the app grid you can set up to 5x5 five five, no issues with that and we still have the papers app of the evolution x that's working super fine now inside security we have this kind of settings and in the settings we have the quick unlock over here and of course i have added the face unlock and fingerprint both now for the face unlock i have changed it to when swiping up on the lock screen that's when the face unlock will work and you can also choose the fingerprint over here and for the app lock too it's working let me actually show you the face unlock and as you can see it unlocks and yes it takes a little bit of time when you compare it with the other devices because this one has a motorized front camera that's why it's taking a little more or little longer but yes it unlocks 100 percent of the time with the face unlock now in the advanced settings if you go here and go into the stock lock options there you will find the app lock and from here you can choose the apps that you want to lock we will have all the apps appearing right here and if you want to lock a particular app let me actually show you right now i have locked this particular app and if i tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it unlocks 
So app lock, face unlock, and the fingerprint scanner, everything is working super great over here, no issues whatsoever. And the device actually doesn't get heated up a lot over here. That's pretty good over here. Earlier, it was getting a little bit heated up whenever you are heavily using the device. But right now, the heating is much, much lesser. And we have the auto lock timeout over here, the collapse notification and stuff, then the enable biometrics for unlocking and stuff for the app lock. Then you can also check for updates from right here whenever you want to. So overall, Evolution X is still one of the best ROMs out there for the Redmi K20 Pro. And this time, it's no different. The lags has been gone. Overall, the UI has been much, much more optimized. And yes, it definitely feels like a pixel whenever you are using the device. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNDX signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.